let's talk about the greatest integer function, also known as the floor function. And it looks like this. So this is the greatest integer of x. Now how can we apply it? So for example, what is the greatest integer of 0.7? How can we evaluate that? So think of all the numbers that are less than 0.7. Which of these numbers is the greatest? The greatest integer that is less than 0.7 is 0. A technique that can help you figure this out is to draw a number line. Let's say this is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. Point 7 is right here on the number line. So what we need to do is pick the integer that is to the left of it. All of these integers are less than 0 0.7, but the greatest of these is 0. So the greatest integer of 0 0.7 is 0. Now what about the greatest integer of 1.8? What do you think that's going to be? Well, this answer has to be 1. If we plot 1.8 on the number line, all you need to do is pick the integer to the left, and that will give you 1. What about the greatest integer of 2.3? This will equal 2. 2.3 is here. If you go to the left, the next integer is 2. But now let's move on to some negative values. Let's try negative 1.6. What is the greatest integer of negative 1.6? And also do this one too, negative 2.8. So if we plot negative 1.6 on the number line, negative 1.6 is between negative 1 and negative 2. So you need to pick the next integer to the left, which is negative 2. Negative 1.6 is not greater than negative 1, but it is greater than negative 2. Now for negative 2.8, if we plot it, it's between negative 2 and negative 3. So if we pick the next integer to the left, this will give us negative 3. Now let's talk about how to graph this function. So first, let's put the marks on the graph. So this is positive 4, and that's 4 as well. So we know that the greatest integer of, let's say, 0 0.6 is 0. If we try, let's say, 0 0.3, that's also going to be 0 as well. So therefore, we should have a horizontal line between 0 and 1, which will have a y value of 0. So it looks like this. It's going to be a closed circle at 0, but an open circle at 1. And then the pattern will repeat. That's how you can graph the greatest integer function. So for example, let's say if we want to find the greatest integer of 1.4. So what you can do is choose an x value of 1.4. So that's between 1 and 2. So 1.4 should be somewhere over here. Then look at the y value. Notice that the y value is 1. So the greatest integer of 1.4 is 1. Now let's say if we want to find the greatest integer function of 3.2. So 3.2 is between 3 and 4. So it should be somewhere over here. And it corresponds to a y value of 3. So hopefully you see how this works. Now let's try a negative one. Let's say negative 2.4. What's the greatest integer of negative 2.4? Negative 2.4 is between negative 2 and negative 3. And this corresponds to a y value of negative 3. You can also just go to the left, which will give you negative 3 as well. So now you know how to evaluate it using the, the graph of the greatest integer function. Now what about this one? What is the greatest integer of 2? So when x is 2, 
we don't use this one because that's an open circle. We need to look for the closed circle, which is here. And that's equal to 2. So the greatest integer of negative 1, we would use this function. That's also equal to negative 1. So if it's an integer itself, it's going to equal that integer. Try these practice problems. Find the greatest integer function of 3.2. 7.8, negative 3.2, and also negative 4.7. So go ahead and work on these for the sake of practice. The greatest integer function of 3.2, we got to pick the greatest integer that's less than 3.2. So this is going to be 3. The highest integer that's less than 7.8 is 7. Now, negative 3.2, let's use the number line for this. Here's negative 3, this is negative 4, negative 2. So negative 3.2 is here. So the greatest integer that's less than negative 3 is negative 4. The greatest integer that's less than negative 4.7 is negative 5. Now try these two as well. The greatest integer function of 4 is going to be 4. And the greatest integer of negative 5 is itself negative 5. Now let's evaluate it with limits. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the greatest integer function of x? So what do you think we need to do here? So we need to check the one-sided limits. Let's start with the left side. So what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the greatest integer function? So let's plug in a number. Left of 0, we can use negative 0.1. What is the greatest integer of negative 0.1? If we use the number line, here's 0, here's negative 1. Negative 0.1 is between 0 and negative 1, so we got to pick the number to the left. This is going to be negative 1. So as we approach 0 from the left, it's going to equal negative 1. And recall, you can always use the graph. You know the graph looks like this. So at negative 1, well, 0 to the left. If we approach 0 from the left side, notice that it's equal to negative 1 using the graph. Now, what about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? So what is the greatest integer function of positive 0.1? Well, positive 0.1 is greater than 0, so this is going to be 0. And as we approach 0, an x value of 0 from the right side, notice that the y value is 0. It's on the x-axis. So you can analyze it graphically, or you can just plug it in. You can plug in numbers. Because the left-sided and the right-sided limit do not match, because they're different, the limit does not exist. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the greatest integer function of x plus 3x? So 2 to the left, we can plug in 1.9. So let's focus on this portion first. What is the greatest integer of 1.9? So out of all the integers that are less than 1.9, which one is the greatest? This is going to be 1. So as x approaches 2 from the left, the greatest integer of x will be 1. And then for 3x, we can plug in 2. So it's going to be 1 plus 6. So the final answer is 7. Now, the way you may want to show your work on a test, you may want to separate the greatest integer function of x and also separate 3x. So you may want to write the limit twice. So we know that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the greatest integer function of x, it has to be 1. And for this side, you can just use direct substitution. That's going to be 3 times 2. And in the end, you should get 7. But some teachers may want you to write out each step first. 
So you may have to do it that way depending on what teacher you have. What is the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of 5 minus 2 times the greatest integer function of x? So first, let's rewrite it as 5 minus 2 times the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of the greatest integer function of x. Now let's focus on this portion of the expression. Negative 3 from the left, what number should we plug in to represent that? So here's negative 3, this is negative 4, and this is negative 2. So negative 3 from the left side means that we need to plug in a number that's between negative 3 and negative 4. So we can plug in negative 3.1. So what is the greatest integer of negative 3.1? So negative 3.1, which we already plotted, the greatest integer is going to be to the left of that. So that's going to be negative 4. So since the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left side of the greatest integer function of x, that's equal to negative 4, we can now find the value of this expression. So it's 5 minus 2 times negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, and 5 plus 8 is 13. So 13 is the answer. What is the limit as x approaches 3 of this expression? 2 minus the greatest integer function of negative x. So because we're dealing with 3 from either side, we need to check the left side and the right side. So let's start with the left side first. So this is going to be 2 minus the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of the greatest integer function of negative x. So if we plug in a number that's to the left of 3, that would be like 2.9. But now notice that we have a negative x on the inside. So what we need to do is find out the greatest integer of negative 2.9. Negative 2.9 is greater than negative 3, but less than negative 2. So the answer is negative 3. And you can always use the number line for that. So here's negative 2. This is uh, negative 3. And here's negative 1. Negative 2.9 is just to the right of negative 3. So to find the greatest integer, always look to the left. And so that's negative 3. So this should equal negative 3. So we have 2 minus negative 3. So on the left side, it's equal to positive 5. Now let's evaluate it on the right side. So on the right side, we need to plug in a number that's greater than 3 because x approaches 3 from the right. So greater than 3 is 3.1. But now to plug in 3.1, the sign is going to reverse. It's going to become negative 3.1. So now what is the greatest integer of negative 3.1? Negative 3.1 is between negative 3 and 4. So negative 4 is less than negative 3, but it's greater than all of the integers that are less than negative 3. So this is negative 4. So this becomes 2 minus negative 4. So the right side of the limit is going to be 2 plus 4, which is 6. Now, because these two do not match, we could say that the limit does not exist. Let's try one more problem. Let's try the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of the greatest integer function of negative x. So try this problem. Pause the video. Negative 2 from the left, what number should we use to represent it? So here's negative 2, negative 3, negative 1. So we need to pick a number that's to the left of negative 2. So negative 2.1 could be a good representation of something that's 
to the left of negative 2. So let's plug in negative 2.1. So we have a negative and then negative 2.1. So we're looking for the greatest integer of positive 2.1 because the two negative signs will cancel. Two point one is to the right of two. So the greatest integer is going to be positive two. So therefore, that's the answer. The limit as x approaches negative two from the left side, which is like two negative two point one, and then if we plug that into negative x, that becomes positive two point one, which the greatest integer of that is positive two. So that's the answer for this question.